Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. This is our first video in a series of engineering short videos we will be doing regarding process filtration. Today's topic is improving hydrotreater and desulfurization feed filtration. And uh, we'll be featuring our uh, field engineering manager, Patrick Hill, who's very familiar with uh, this sort of process. So uh, Patrick, do you wanna say hello to the audience real quick? Yeah, sure. Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you find this video really useful, and I look forward to talking about this topic. Hey, so, Patrick, uh, at Mott, we're getting quite a few um, projects related to hydro treating filtration. And I know you're the manager of these uh, projects, all the way from the design of the filter to the implementation and post installation support. So. Would you like to talk to the audience a little bit about why hydro treating, uh, hydro treating filtration is more important than ever right now? Sure, so there was a big regulation change in 2020 uh, from the International Maritime Organization, which drastically reduces sulfur content in marine fuel. Uh, you can see the numbers on the screen. The effort there is to reduce sulfur oxide emissions uh, and hydro treating or desulfurization is one way to solve that problem. Uh, it can be solved another way, which is, you know, removing the sulfur oxide from the emissions on the physical uh, ship or vessel. Um, however, hydro treaters located at refineries are currently being used today and are high performing technology, which can meet these limits. And I know the a very important thing to a lot of these manufacturers is filtrate quality. Could you tell the audience a little bit more about that? So with desulfurization, you're usually undergoing some uh, catalysis or, or catalyst based reaction. Uh, it's really important that your feed stream uh, has solid particulate removed from uh, from it prior to that reaction for two reasons. Uh, first, uh, additional particles can result in a higher differential pressure across your fixed bed if you are using a fixed bed reactor. Uh, or certain particles can damage that fixed bed or even poison the reaction. Uh, so that would translate to poor or non-conforming product or potentially you know, down maintenance time to repair, replace, or add catalyst to that bed. Okay, great. And uh, I know a lot of customers uh, in today's uh, hydro treating processes are using what we call a mesh filter, which is a depth filter. Um, and comparative to that is MOT uh, employs barrier filtration. So um, we wanted to quickly explain to the audience why they might want to consider barrier filtration versus depth filtration. Yeah, sure thing. So there's there's quite a few different technologies that could be used in this application, but for this short video, let's just look at the differences between depth and barrier filtration. I'll start by explaining barrier filtration. Uh, it's the simplest form of filtering, which is make sure that, that the size of your filter is smaller than the size of your particles. Uh, in doing that, it's very natural for your particles to collect on uh, the dirty surface of the filter rather than passing through the depth of the filter and potentially passing to the clean side of the filter. So in the case of a, a barrier filter, we would size for a sub-micron particle level for this type of application, although every application is slightly different. What the barrier filter will get you is a more predictable uh, filtrate quality. Again, because you're filtering based on size exclusion, it's very mm -hmm. predictable, it's repetitive, and so therefore you can expect a filtrate quality less than 100 ppm. Whereas some of the mesh filters, uh, they vary, again, depending upon the process, depending upon the operation conditions, you may struggle to meet a 100 ppm threshold or any other threshold. Again, uh, when it comes to backwashability, because you're keeping those particles on the dirty surface and not in the depth of the media, it lends itself well to a very efficient online cleaning. Uh, it's much easier to dislodge particles from the surface of, a, of a, a, any sort of substance than it would be to try to dislodge particles within the depth of this substance. And that's represented in the picture in the upper left, a very simplified schematic of particles uh, becoming embedded in the depth of a media. What does that translate to? Uh, if you have better filtrate quality and better backwashability, uh, keeping particles on the correct surface of the media, it means that you're going to go longer between external cleanings. Your, your media is going to stay cleaner longer. You will have a uh, more predictable recovery differential pressure. 
Uh, and because of that, you should see the operation uh, extended and uh, have a longer duration between those cleanings. And because you have a longer duration between those cleanings, it means your system is online longer, which means your throughput is better and you're spending less time doing maintenance. Now, all those things are really good, Dan. Uh, they're, they're positive benefits, they sound attractive, but I understand that changing is sometimes difficult. So uh, we do something a little special at Mont on how we prove uh, the effectiveness of a change, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And so our customers, I know, um, you know, typically in industries such as chemical processing and FCC, RFC, RFCC refining, uh, we start with what we call a filter feasibility test. And I know we performed a couple of these tests for hydro treating um, producers. So I wanted you to speak to some of the engineers out there about the importance of why filter feasibility testing is the first step you should take when specking out a filter for your process. Yeah, so it, put it extremely simply, it eases the concerns of switching from one technology to another because it generates real objective evidence of the change. Uh, we perform this testing at representative process conditions with the same exact media that would be used in a commercial operation, but use a small amount of volume, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And what this test gets us and gets the end user is objective evidence of the technology. We can determine the flux. We get a deep understanding of the particles, their size, their shape, their distribution. We can look at the filtrate quality, whether that is in a measure of color or in a measure of total suspended solids. And we can look at backwashability. Of course, capturing particles is one thing. If, if the filter cannot be backwashed, it will not be a successful filter. And we do all this in one day. It's a very efficient test. It gets representative data. And from that data, we can make intelligent scale up decisions. And we don't need a whole lot to get this testing started. We? No, we really don't. Uh, a couple liters of representative feed slurry. If we wanted to compare and contrast against the existing technology, if we were trying to reach a lower filtrate quality limit for some reason, we'd want a little bit of the uh, existing filtrate so that we can do that side by side comparison. And then, of course, just for safety, anytime we're taking in any sort of liquid chemical, we need to have a safety data sheet. So we would need that for this sample as well. Okay, great. And uh, just a quick recap of the uh, past uh, five minutes or so that we spent with the audience, uh, just so they know the key takeaways from uh, barrier filtration and hydro treating. Right, so with the change in IMO requirements, hydro treaters or desulfurization units are, are much more critical to a refinery than maybe at any time in the past. Uh, if you're using a mesh filter at these types of technologies, you may see that you're struggling to meet filtrate quality, uh, or you may have damaged catalyst beds, loss of throughput related to fixing those beds, so on and so forth. Uh, we believe a barrier filter is the right technology for this application. It'll capture particles more reliably. It'll capture them in a way that lends it easier to backwash, and ultimately it will protect these catalyst beds. And we can prove that with a short one day exercise. Uh, with clear objective evidence, we can prove the benefits of making a switch in filter media. All right. And that's all we have for today. Uh, so Patrick, thank you so much. Uh, so we'll be releasing more of these videos in the next coming weeks. Uh, again, our intent is to uh, spend about five to 10 minutes on these applications and then allow for customers to follow up directly if they would like to speak in more details with some of our engineers regarding their process. So, uh, Patrick, thank you. Uh, thank you for speaking with us today. And did you have anything else you'd like to say to the audience at this point? I just wanted to say thanks for listening. Uh, we're always welcome. Uh, any questions or if you guys want to have discussions about this sort of stuff, you can see my contact info here. Please reach out and we'd be happy to talk about it. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, thank you for attending and have a great day.